this walk we've come out to the quiet little village of Stonethwaite in Borrowdale. And we're heading out of the village now and we're going to go up onto the two fells in front of us called Great Crag and Knots. Now Great Crag, as many Wainwright fans will know, is actually one of the 214 fells in the Central Fells book. But the other one, Knots, is actually a fell which Wainwright listed in his first and second list when he was compiling the idea for the pictorial guides. It never made the final 214 cut and didn't get featured in the books, didn't even get a mention. But we're going to have a look at that and by crossing the bridge here at Stonethwaite and we'll turn right up through the woods, past Dock Tarn and we'll get up onto the summits. Just a bit further along the path, you'll come across a really nice round sheepfold, just set up onto the hillside a bit. Well, you leave the wall here and take the path that goes left to the top side of the sheepfold itself, and that will take you up to the path that goes through the wood. This pitch path really helps on the ascent of Great Crag. I know it's not to everyone's liking, but it certainly has prevented erosion here down through the woods, where it's quite steep and slippy roots and things. But it doesn't take long before you've got out of the woods and you're back out into open space. And when you do, you get a view like that. Eagle Crag and Sergeant Crag just sat plumb in the middle of the valley. There for another day, but we'll get on to Great Crag. location has always impressed me. It's called Willy Grass Gill and it's a fine tumbling of a stream coming down the hillside but it's the way they built the wall at the top it's on the right hand side and then it narrows and the wall stops 
crosses over to the left hand side and then continues to follow the gill all the way down. Well, here the normal route to get to Great Crag would be just to carry on up the path and that would lead you past Dog Town and then up to the summit of Great Crag. But just here we're going to veer off to the northwest and head over towards the summit of Knott's. Now it's hardly a well-known summit at all so I don't expect there to be much of a path so we'll be doing a bit of cross-country work I would think. There might be a faint path because it does appear on one other list I think um, but out of curiosity and as part of the Lakeland 365 project that's where we're heading to now. Just out of interest way ahead of me I can see what looks to be quite a nice little town which I never knew about and part of this whole adventure is going to explore places that I've never been to or I've not heard of people actually going to and uh, yeah so that's why we're where we are So this is the summit of Knott. I'm amazed how little sign of any footpath at all there is on here. It's a lovely little top. Okay, the view to the east is blocked by Great Crag, which is just here where we're heading to next. But all around, from the south right through, back up to the north, in fact, you can see um, Skidder way up there, right over to Lonscale Pike. When you stand on the top, the views are exceptionally good. The area is just covered, it's, it's heather and rocks, a few little pools here and there, sheep grazing, not a sign of a path. Now Wainwright put this on his original two lists because it was marked on the OS map and, and in fact it was on the Bartholomew map at the time as well, whereas Grey Crag wasn't marked as a, a, a measured height and I would imagine that Wainwright saw the 1250 contour line that surrounded this little top and thought that would be worth a look but it didn't make it instead he included Great Crag which is justifiably so because from the top of Great Crag you get more of a 360 degree view than you do from here 
but it's just interesting to come to some of these places that Wainwright considered but never got round to describing or fitting into any of his books at all. But then that's what the Lakeland 365 project's all about for me, to go and see some of these little tops that he thought about including but never got round to for one reason or the other. And it's just exploring new places in the Lake District to me. People say that Lake District's very busy and yet again I've proved that without much effort you can come to a really quiet place. You can pitch a tent here, there's some nice little hollows just here. You wouldn't be disturbed, no one would see you and for a photographer or an artist the views, especially down here into Borrowdale, down here towards Base Brown, and then right up to Gate, Gate Gable, they're just exceptional. It's well worth a visit. Anyway, off up to Great Crack. And this is Dock Tarn. It's quite substantial in size, and because it's hidden away in the hollow, not many people know it's actually here. But it's a real beauty. Even Wainwright described it as a place to lie a dreaming, and life seems such a sweet, sweet thing. He wasn't wrong. Well, we're nearly at the top of Great Crag, and down there, hidden from sight at the minute, is Dock Tarn. Now normally, at this time of year, this whole area would be just a mass of purple heather. But probably due to the harshness of this summer, the flower has all but gone. There's hardly anything left, a few little flushes of purple here and there. But never mind, it'll be here for another time. Meantime, on to the top. And this is the Wainwright summit of Great Crag at 1,473 feet, slightly lower than he estimated. It's a place to stand and admire the fine views. There are actually two tops to this fell this one, and as you can see, there's another cairn 80 metres further to the north, but that's slightly lower. There's a good path leading between the two tops, so we'll head north and visit that next summit.
This path used to just be a boggy mess. But in the last few years, they've placed some big slabs down here and it makes it much easier for walking on. The whole area is really just like a moss, a bog, and it has a really good um, crop or population, if you like, of this. this. This is bog myrtle. And if you just crush it between your fingers and smell it, it's quite citrusy, but it's a lovely smell. And apparently it makes a really good anti-midge repellent. There's also, at the right time of year, you'll also see an awful lot of bog aspidal here, which are small little uh, yellow-headed poker-type um, flowers. And all that's left now are the little red stalks. They're still very nice. It's just quite an interesting area. We're heading now down towards Wattenlath. But before then, we'll head left towards Rothway. As we've just come near the gate, I've seen this sign. And as you may be able to see just to the left, there's a decent footpath. So obviously the sign that says to avoid walking across the wetland area to prevent uh, damage to wildlife. I didn't see one on the other end of the footpath as we came down off Grey Crag. So 50% of the people who walk across here probably don't know about this sign. And this is the track that goes between Rothwaite down there and Wattenlaff up there. But now we're heading down to Rothwaite. We'll leave going to Wattenlaff for another day. It's a popular path, but the pub is in this direction. back at the start, at the village of Stonethwaite. As you can probably tell, the light's faded. I do spend a lot of time when I'm out looking for stuff and taking photographs, doing some sketching whenever I can. So that does increase the time that it takes me to do such a walk. But hopefully this film has inspired you to get out and maybe come and visit these two summits, see them for yourselves. And if you like what you've seen, why don't you subscribe to my channel or even simpler, just click like and share the film with your friends. But thanks for watching. I'm off to the pub. Mm -hmm.